All right. Hey, everyone. Hey, Derek. It's good to see you. Hello. All right. So once again, Rachel is going to be in front of class. I'll be speaking as my back got fixed today and I don't want to re-jack it up. Before we get started, are there any questions or requests for tonight's class? All right. Let's get started and see how things go. Let's see. <laughs> Hopefully Rachel will make it. I got this. <laughs> Teaching has started, so you know, <laughs> she's doing us all a big favor. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so Rachel in the center, hands on the head, feet together. Or tiny of 20. Okay. Rachel's gonna start by rolling her weight all the way around her feet, side, front, side, and back. Take your time with the roll. If you find yourself losing balance in the beginning, that's okay. That's why we start slow. And once the feet feel good and warmed up and the coordination consistent, then you can increase the amplitude of the circle as though there's a string pulling on your waist, drawing you around that base. Good, making sure that roll around the feet is always present. Four more. One more. Awesome. Good, back to the center. As you roll the other direction, again, start by just rolling around your feet, nice small circle, wake the feet up going the other way. Taking your time, once those feet loosen, increase the size of your circle. Good. Increasing the size and the space between the feet with the hands on the hips to begin with. Drawing the belly into the spine, rolling from the waist as you keep the back straight, rolling the chest forward. As the hips roll forward, the chest comes up. Good. Start with five and put the hands on the hips. From there, bring the hands to the center of the chest. Again, the focus is still to keep that back straight and lift from the hips. From there, the hands behind the ears. Again, same thing, back straight, lifting from the pelvis. Two more. Excellent. From here, hands on the hips, the same feet. Good. Drawing the weight forward as you lean down, turning and looking at the ceiling or the sky. Excellent. And 10 of those. Keep the back straight as you sink, back straight as you raise, and then twist.
two more. Good. From here, widen the base. Back straight. This one. All right. We'll see how much I can do this one today. Right. Your best. Widen the base. Back straight. Doesn't need a low stance. Because low stance is, is, is comfortable. The weight slightly in the front of the feet. A slight bend to the knees. Nice and slow as you turn, look, and stretch. Good. Feeling the hips roll, and then feeling the back stretch as you look past your ankle. Good. Using that outstretched palm to help open the spine as you twist, Joanna. So as the hand comes across, use that reaching palm to stretch to open your back. Very nice. Good. One more. And the last one. Very nice, very nice. Narrowing the stance to a bit wider than shoulder width. Starting with the hands on the hips. There you go, there you go, that's yeah, good. And just start, like our first exercise, rolling your weight around your feet. Back, side, front, side, and back. Once that roll feels comfortable, you can add in the dip. Good, and accelerating through. Very nice. And every so often spot checking to make sure that you're still rolling all the way around your feet. Remember that foot roll is the first most important thing. The more dynamic hip roll is secondary. How many? Let's do six more. Two more. Very nice. Changing direction, starting that nice vertical stance, rolling your weight around your feet. Once the feet and hips feel good and warm, then you can add in that dip. Four more. Two, and 10. Very nice. All right, from here, with a stance slightly wider than shoulder width, there's gonna be a step to the side as you step, raising that foot up to kick. So 20 of these, step to lift, step to lift. Good, and slightly wider step, Joanna, a bit more of a step to the side, very nice. And same for Galen, step a bit more to the side, Galen, so you can really pull your weight up as you lift that foot. There you go, good. Good, April. How many? 20 in total. One more. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Excellent. So from here, we're gonna work on a qua kick. Again, qua is that inguinal groove between the abdomen and the leg. And the basic mechanics here, so I'll, I'll, I'll definitely do it straight slow, but Rachel will do the actual power. As I pull the arm back, the hip draws in. Now, that pull engages the hip, the hip draws the heel. So it's one hands, two hip, three kick. And so we're gonna bring that a couple times of ratio where the arms draw the pelvis, and here my pelvis is engaged, and that last half of the movement is drawing the heel off the ground with the arms. The arms are carrying you all the way through. So nice and slow, feel the arm pull the hip, the hip pull the heel, and the heel create the kick. There you go. Good. Make sure each time you're going through that sequence of arm to claw to foot. And let's do five, nice and slow on this side, playing with that really relaxed draw. Feel that sequence. 
the arms pulling all the way through. Feel them draw on different parts of the body as they continue along their course. There you go. That was good. Continuous. Don't draw it. One, two. There you go. Hands to hip, hip to foot. There, one continuous arc. One more nice and slow. That's it. And now from there, make sure the clavicles are knit, the belly is drawn to the spine, and we're going to do five more at a greater intensity. Awesome. And E. R. San. Si. Wu. Very nice. Other side. Same thing as you start out. Play with that arm pull, pulling the hip, the hip pull, pulling the leg. It's like your heel is stuck in the mud, and you need those arms drawing back to dislodge your heel and bring it up. There you go. Take your time. Feel that body twist permitting downwards. Good. <laughs> Excellent. A couple more nice and slow. So they're going to do three more nice and relaxed, pulling through their body. Very good. Now five more with a little more oomph. Make sure the clavicles are knit, the belly is drawn to the spine, and begin. E, R, San, Si, Wu. Awesome. And relax for a second. If I borrow Rachel, so if Rachel is one foot forward, right, and if I'm just swinging from my knee and I want to kick that foot, in, eh, it doesn't do a whole lot, right? I have to dislodge her foot. If I'm just swinging into it, she has that root, I have a swing. But if I'm pulling from the ground and my hip, even slow, you can see I just drags her across, okay? Even more so, is okay if I go here? Yeah. If my arms, you can block your arms, okay. You can make the same distance. As I pull back, you see how it's already moving a little bit? And now as I pull from that hip, there's nothing there at all. It just tosses her right back. And so you that coordination of kicking from your hip as opposed to kicking from your knee is a vital component of all internal powerful kicking. This is just a nice, easy way of breaking down that sequence so it's easy to kind of begin to absorb. And then from here, you can put it in different shapes, right? Crescent kicks, roundhouse kicks, side kicks. They all have some, some amount of this full body draw that then ends up in the foot. Does that make sense? Awesome, awesome. So again, a nice little trick and a nice easy thing to play with as you move towards more complex material in the future. From here, we're gonna do our squat kicks, our first 10. And we're gonna do squat into a straight leg kick. We don't wanna kick cross body. We wanna kick a little to the side for this one. There are a couple of things we wanna keep in mind. The first are that the toes pull back so the heel can protrude, okay? That's gonna help you stretch down your hamstring open up your back and your glute along with the hamstring over time. It's a really important way of getting all the structures to move together. The other thing is you want to push into the ground with the leg that's stabilized. It's not just a passive relationship with this grounded leg. This leg is actively pressing as the other foot comes up. All right? Yep. So let's do three of these nice and slow without much oomph. Rachel sinks, and she kicks as she raises and falls back into her stance. Kicks as she raises, sinks back into her stance. Good. You see everyone else here do a couple more? Good, April. Very nice, Joanna. Good, and Galen, try to straighten the leg a little more. It doesn't matter how high it is, try to keep that press to the heel. There, that's great. That will yield good dividends. Awesome. And now from here, 10 with some breath. All right? E. R. San. Si. Wu. Leo, Chi, Ba, Jo, Sure. Very nice. Shake that out. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. And from here, we're going to start playing with Chuan. We're going to do eBay 100 Chuan. Okay? And so, again, for Chuan, there's the reach to drill. The hand comes under between the crook of the elbow and the side of the elbow. From there, the hand stack to neutral. The other hand reaches through, drops, neutral, drill. Drop, neutral, drill. If you go through the whole sequence every time, just do maybe 50. If you can relax and find that more snake-like movement, try to roll through the whole 100, okay? Don't worry about going slow if you're going slow right now. Everyone start slow. Once you get that coordination down, you can do 100 without no, no, no problem.
reach each time. Each one's a hit. So if Rachel turns sideways, rolling side to side. Oh, good job. Sorry. <laughs> Belly's drawn to the back, clavicles are knit. It's okay. Good, good. All right, next up, we're gonna do a bit of work with our hip rotation on their legs a little bit warmer. So as Rachel starts, their feet a, a nice, good. It's cachata. We're not gonna cachata, we're gonna do hip, hip circles. Oh, we're gonna okay. mix up a little bit. <laughs> we're gonna, I like to do kind of pacing it up. So the feet in a nice relaxed stance, but more of the shoulder width. We're gonna do external rotation of the right leg. So again, for these first few circles, make sure that you're isolating the movement and initiating it from the hip. You're pivoting around your ankle and you're not pulling in any direction whatsoever from your knee. Your knee is a passive passenger. It's just along for the ride, okay? What you're doing right now is training the hip to move more effectively so that when you go into deeper and more difficult stances, the knee doesn't need to strain. The knee's gonna find out how it can be relaxed as the hip rotates around that base. The movement of the feel of the foot, rather, is analogous to the feel of the first and last movement of our hip opening exercises with that roll around the base. So make sure they're rolling around all four quadrants of the foot, but that movement is being initiated by the opening and closing of the quad of the butt. Yeah. And changing feet. Good, taking your time, make sure you feel that hip open and roll to close, roll to open and roll to close. From here, begin playing with your figure eights. Again, first few moments, don't worry about the other elements. Just make sure that you're hitting each quadrant of the foot as you go from a lobe of figure eight to lobe of figure eight. Hear that? Wonderful. From here, start bringing in the foot grab. And again, not a death grip, right? Gripping with the first toe, the big toe, the second toe, and a little bit with the heel as the arch draws ever so slightly, creating some stability and engagement to the muscles of the lower leg, in particular the tibialis anterior, the muscle on the front of the shin. Feel yourself pull from leg to leg. The foot grabs, drawing you from side to side. That foot engagement is going to stabilize your legs and protect your knees. Nextly, drawing the umbilicus towards the spine. They give a good range on a good pressure. So from here, again, I show her where her quad is. From there, she can sit down ever so slightly. The tailbone isn't tucking, it's just dropping plumb down. She can feel her hips and then begin to roll, utilizing more of her quads and building those leg muscles to be so instrumental for building power later on in her practice. Again, in Gong Fu, every chance you get to develop your legs and increase the coordination to your legs is probably a thing you should do and take advantage of. Good, having dealt with that, we're now gonna knit the clavicles ever so slightly. As the clavicles knit, the scapula, those big bones in the back, splay ever so slightly. The clavicles knit together. That helps her find balance as she sinks and also gives space for her to breathe and space for her heart. And finally, there's the raise through the head and neck of that cervical spine. Good. Again, lifting in the back, providing some stability in the front just so we don't jolt the spine in any weird direction. 
From there, there's this cross-body traction of the head and neck lifting, the tailbone, the coccyx sinking, and space between the vertebra becoming more and more of a thing that you can play with. Very nice, a few more seconds. Yeah, you see how the, 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 the amplitude of movement decreases with each one of those additions, right? Yeah. But the full body movement increases. Yeah. And so you're not wiggling so much, but you're rolling more in the middle. Definitely. Yeah, and that's the goal for all this, is not to wiggle hip to hip, it's to begin to feel movement in the center permeate out and through. Very nice, and relax, shake the legs out for a brief second. Bring your internal rotation next. Okay. Do some knee rolls first. Yep, let's do some knee rolls. So the feet together and the hands on the patella, have the kneecap same. Yep. <laughs> Rachel's gonna lead you through six in each direction and she's gonna call out the change. Two. Good, make sure you're rolling your weight all the way around your knees. One more. And other way. One more. Good. And forward, open, and back. One more. And back, open, and forward. One more. Very nice. Shake that out for a second. Let's do the other direction of leg rolls. So internal rotation is up next. Find a stance width that feels good to you. Feels comfortable where you can control that movement. As you roll internal, try to feel each quadrant of that foot light up. Doing great. Cool. Yeah. Changing legs. And then progressing on to internally rotating figure eights. Remember the first challenge is to make sure you're still hitting each part of that foot, each side, the front and the back on every revolution. The hip initiates, rolling around the ankle, and once again, the knee is just along for the ride. It's interesting with the first two toes doing the pulling, that gets that side of the foot, and then as you come around the outside, that gets the other side of the foot. Right, so the whole, it's, it's massage for your feet. It's really cool. That. Yeah. It's cool. The feet are fascinating. It's you know, 26 bones, hundreds of little bits of connective tissue, incredibly complex structures. So easy to break. So easy to break. And then from there, <laughs> beginning that engagement with the big toe, the second toe, and the heel, as the arch draws up like a suction cup ever so slightly, trying to play with that sensation of pulling from foot to foot. There's always a little bit of passive foot engagement, but it increases ever so slightly as you draw from hip to hip. Next, the umbilicus draws towards the spine. There you go, which will often cause the pelvis to roll forward a little bit. You take that posterior tilt, the belly draws in, and you sit down, that posterior tilt goes away, and you find a nice neutral hip. From there, you can often sink in and feel that shelf that the quad creates, then roll around that base. You see them more often, but they're the easier to feel. Mm -hmm. You don't need nearly as much to deepen even that work. Yeah. Next, the clavicles knit and the scapula splay. Mm -hmm. 
And lastly, the head and neck raises at the back of the skull, the base of the skull, creating space, those cervical neck vertebra, and traction all the way down the spine towards the tailbone. Tailbone sinking, head, neck raising, person expanding in the middle. Just a few more moments of this. Good, everyone, and relax for a moment. Okay, we're gonna do our squat kick outside crescents next. Awesome. Pacing out the suffering tonight, because we can. So again, for an outside crescent, there are two main things we're working on. There's the pulling in and the pulling out. And so it's vital that you cross your center line twice, once in the initiation, once in the delivery of, okay? So again, she's pulling her leg across, pulling the leg out. Try this a few times each leg. As you pull across, draw on that hip. As you push out, really press the rooting leg into the ground as the leg travels around and through. And so if Rachel turns sideways for a second, don't kick yet, but if she kicks this leg, cross. As she kicks out, okay, yep. she's gonna be stretching from here all the way down her leg, okay? <laughs> so there's a drop from mid-back all the way to her foot as she kicks out. So she's pushing down as she's raising up. Everyone try just a few of those each side. Try to feel that stretch down your back as the foot raises and kicks. Good, just as with our front kick, toes pulled back, flexed back, heel pressed out, legs straight. It doesn't matter how high your kick is, if your leg is straight and you're integrating in your back, over time this kind of exercise will begin to increase your flexibility and range of motion. Good. Just a couple more nice and slow, just playing with the form of the kick, then we'll do 10 with the squat. All right, so now for our squat, now, watching Rachel first, as she sinks, she's going to kick as she raises, using the lift to power the kick up and through. She has a pretty deep squat. If you don't trust your knees to go low, you can still do the kick. The kick will just be a little bit lower because there's less to pull out of the ground to kick with. So again, make sure you're timing the height of your kick with the depth of your stance. If Rachel has a very slight squat, she can still kick, but it's going to be about waist height. That's great. That's a great place to kick, but she's not going to kick high. She doesn't have the runway to get there. Does that make sense? Awesome. Let's go for 10. And E. R. Sun. S. Wu. Liu. Qi. Ba. Jiu. Last one. Sure. Good job. Shake it out, everyone. Get a quick sip of water. I felt better today than yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so the more you draw into your back, the better those become. Yeah. The more you isolate the thing, less support it is, the more likely it is to be injured. So the more the full body is moving, the less likely it is to tweak something out. Maybe it helps that I'm sore today. Being, you know, being sore is wonderful. <laughs> being sore is a big help. <laughs> So I saw April messing around with this, so we're all gonna mess around with this today. Woo! <laughs> ha ha! <laughs> I love the nonverbal questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's like making eye contact with the teacher. Right, so I'm gonna demonstrate the less um, back intensive part, then I'll let Rachel take over for the more back intensive part. So I'll show you all the basic hand movement, then she's gonna show you how to integrate it into the hips, okay? <laughs> So as I start, and again, I'm gonna call it the limbs and mirror. So this is my right hand, but I'll call it your left so it's easier to follow off what I'm doing. There's a scoop, a lift, a turn, and a reach. I'll turn the camera up so it's a little bit easier to see the full arc. So scoop at the umbilicus, we raise. Once I get to my nose level, I begin that turn and reach. So I'm not arcing way above my head here, I begin to turn out at nose height and then reach out to the side. Palm up, scoop, palm out, reach. Scoop to reach, scoop to reach. As you start, this may be a pure shoulder movement just so you figure out a basic coordination. Once that coordination becomes a little bit easier to manage, then it becomes more of a hip movement. Turn, turn. 
turn in, turn out. We did internal rotation for the Tai Chi class. We're going to put external rotation in our Bagua class just to balance things out a little bit. Scoop to the nose, turn to press. Scoop to the nose, turn to press. There are a number of reasons you all keep going with this. Why I'm moving from the hips and not the shoulders, right? The first is for a more complete movement, for a better workout, I want my whole body moving. Also, if Rachel's pressing on me and I move my shoulder, I've got very, very little. It's a rough angle. If I move from my belly, oh. <laughs> I've got everything. Because once again, all of me is rolling into that shape. So even on just a unilateral movement, only half my body moving, I can still create something of a pressure if I'm pulling from my hip, scooping out to press. Let's play with that for a moment, all of us. Good, making sure the elbow never locks out. There's always a little bit of, of slack left in the elbow. But Derek, make sure that as you reach out, there's still enough of a reach to get that sensation of Bagua guard before you recycle back around. Guard to pull, guard to pull. And because it's falling into a Bagua guard, the part of the hand that we're presenting isn't the, fat, the flat flushed palm, it's the side of the hand like this. There's a little bit of a stretch to that ulnar little finger side. Once again, the hand is cupped a little turning in. Again, not flushed, slightly cupped. Good. Exactly, April. <laughs> Very nice. Lift to look, lift to look. Good. Try and go to the side a few times. We'll add in a bit of play with that second arm. Good, Kira. Making sure the hand is scooping, Kira, as you get to your nose, turning to reach. Scooping, turning to reach. I can see you. Hey. <laughs> Very nice, Kira. Scooping like you're scooping water. So there's a little bit of a basin in the palm of the hand, and then you turn and re-stretch that. Very good. Scoop, that's it, turn and press. Good, very nice, Galen. Good, Elizabeth and Derek, very good, Joanna. Okay, so that first hand's looking pretty good. Thank you, Rachel. The second hand is a little more tricksy, whereas this hand is the hand that's kind of partner presenting, right? If Rachel has her hands up, this is the hand that's making contact. And so my tendency is to focus on this arm. This arm is really just a byproduct of the movement happening in this arm, okay? So the full movement is this. The other arm is doing this, pressing down, like we're compressing substance to the belly. As we hit that belly button and move towards Don Tian, the Don Tian, by the way, is about three finger widths beneath the umbilicus. So we press the belly button, and as we go to Dante, we begin our roll. And that roll turns the palm up. That palm up lifts to, once again, about the level of our nose as it arcs up and over, pressing down to the level of the umbilicus, where it turns, still descending to the level of the Dante, lifting palm up, up and over the head, pressing down to the umbilicus, turning as it sinks a little lower, reaching, to the height of the nose, gathering as it crests over the top of our head, pressing, and so on. The coordination here, even though it's in some ways an easier circle, is a bit more challenging. It's not as confined by the reach of the arm as the first movement. Once again, the hips can play a part. The hip turns, the hand follows. The hip turns, the hand draws in. Hip turns, the hand arcs out. Hip turns, the hand arcs in. I'll reach step in and continue with that. There you go. As you press down, it's a bit of a sensation like you're doing a sit up. You're pushing into your belly, you're loading this area and making it more of a kind of full structure. Turn. There. Sink, turn. 
That's it. Turn. There, so use the hips out of the way, use the belly to draw in and press. Very nice. Drawing into your belly, reach, gather, draw into your belly, reach to gather. And changing arms. I know it's tough, isn't it? I can't do my build in my abs, but I don't move my hips. That's interesting. Is that it, isn't it? Yeah. Who does right? Yeah. Good, April. Moving from that base. Excellent, Derek and Elizabeth. Very good, Kira. That's looking wonderful. And Joanna, that's right on track. You're all doing really, really well. Do about three more of these, and we'll start integrating both together. Count going to three. Right. <laughs> it happens. It means you're working hard. Good and relax. Yeah, everyone relax for a moment watching me. So now we have our first arm, our second arm, and now I get to put them together. So watching me first. My outstretched arm, your left arm is the high arm, so my eyes are on it. As it sinks. My other arm, your right arm, is coming up. As it passes above, my eyes turn to the higher arm. My eyes turn to the higher arm. The arm is going to reach out, passes on the inside of the arm that's pressing down. In part, this is in case Rachel is grabbing my arm. Uh -huh. Now I get her hand off. I can come through here and slip her hand right off. So this arm is shaving down to break the grip on it, theoretically. So as I come through, there's the gather, there's the clear, there's the reach. And see how from that reach, I very quickly go back to both arms to even. My eyes turn to the high arm. As that arm presses, the other arm raises. My eyes turn again, following that high arm. The palm turns, the eyes turn. And we reach. The palm turns, the eyes turn. Clear to reach. And I'll reach, I'll step in. Good April. Using that reach, Derek, use the reach out with the far arm. Great timing, Joanna. Good, good pace. Good, Galen. So, Galen. Sorry, Rachel. Okay. I'm not looking at myself. I always do. <laughs> looking at my hands. All right. There you go. Very nice. Very nice. And changing sides, haha. 
There you go. <laughs> Take your time. Just like a double sword, if you forget how to use both hands, make sure one's looking good and try to add in the others. That is the key to fudging double sword. <laughs> Very nice. And now as you continue to roll, try to feel the muscles of your belly moving as you draw the arm around and press down, loading the arm that reaches out. Very nice, everyone relax for a second. Thank you. Yeah. You draw the camera down a little so I can get back into the hips. It's hips time. Oh, I lost my head. Don't lose your head. No, it's been known to happen. That's more or less me. Okay, so in the external rotation, it plays a little bit on that first roll, right? The figure eight to figure eight. We can all kind of follow along a little. They see how as the hip rolls, my arm follows. Hip rolls, arm follows. And so on the lead side, I'm gonna call the outstretched arm the lead. This hand is just a fraction behind the same side lead hip. The hip pulls in, it draws the arm with it. The hip begins to turn out, that turn pushes the arm. The hip pulls the arm, the hip pushes the arm. The hip pulls, the hip pushes. So again, it's not a one from one, hip hand together, hip hand together. There's a little bit of syncopation as that hip leads like the marionette puppeteer pulling the strings of the hand. Everybody play with that for just a moment. We'll add in that second arm in time with the second hip. Good, playing with that little bit of delay, playing with how that lead hip pulls the hand and guides it. Very nice. Remember, for those who've been here a while, and this might be new for a couple of you, full body power isn't everything happening at once. Full body power is a cascade that ends in a single instant. It requires an acceleration of movement from region to region that builds towards this giant flow of power that stops on a point. And so the hip is leading, the hand is following as you draw this coil. Very nice, very nice, thank you. So now for that second hand, we have our lead hip, pulling and guiding that first arm, notice how whereas the front hip, the lead hip, is in time with the lead hand, the back hip is rolling opposite. The hand and leg cross, the hand and leg cross, the hand and leg cross. And so this is maybe the most challenging component of the movement, is getting that cross down, but that cross is the driving motor and movements such as this, the driving motor of many, many of the techniques that we play with. As the hand and foot cross, there's that twist. That twist creates a whole lot of power coiling in the belly that can then be expressed out through the lead hand. This is the antenna, this is the engine. So let's play with that for a second, with that roll. Yeah, cool. just with this hand? Yeah, just that back hand. Good, I can still see, you're still, you're still about Joanna, so we're still good. I can still tell how you're moving. Very nice, April. Using that cross back and forth to draw into your belly and then to reach out. Good. Draw into the belly and then express out with that power. You're gathering and then expressing for everyone else. Play with that gather. Play with that gather, drawing in. Good, focus on that backhand and how it crosses twice. Just a backhand. Can I see? Sorry, let me watch you. I'm, I'm moving together, I'm not crossing. It's okay. Okay. Am I inside or outside rolling? Outside rolling. We are both Sorry, less dyslexic, everybody. and so every so often there are technical glitches. You are doing awesome, Rachel. Am I getting this time? Yes, you're spot on. Lovely. Nailed it. Woo! Good. Okay. Relax for a second now. So, <laughs> as I take back over, it's confusing, right? Yeah. It's nightmarish. So we have the external rotation, <laughs> and we have the roll now, right? And we go nice and slow. The back hand is opposite, the front hand is led. 
And so the power structure of this is such that this hand, the back hand, as it presses in, I'm gathering and condensing into my belly. As I press into that belly, the front hand pulls from that power and stretches out from that draw. So I'm drawing in and then expressing out, drawing in, expressing out, gathering, delivering, gathering, delivering. Two very distinct feelings to go hand to hand, rolling hip to hip. First hand pulls into the belly, second hand draws that pull out into a twist. Hips are going in or out? Out. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Yes, that's awesome. Great, Rachel. Good. Keep that hua. There, and see, that's going to force you to quail more in your stomach. You feel that? Mm -hmm. So as you play with this, once the patterning feels good, re-engage your basic principles, foot grab, belly draw, clavicle knit, and head neck lift. And that will help you to further engage your middle. Again, waving your arms in a fancy pattern is great so long as it eventually leads to further body integration. And in Northern Styles, we are encouraged to wave our hands in fancy patterns until the pattern becomes clear, we can bring it deeper into our bodies. Very nice. You've got a stretch that wants to pull you. Good. Change the other side, everyone. Oh. Yep. We're about to get to the point of all this. <laughs> we are nearing the reason why we're doing this. Right. You are. Okay. Taking your time. The back hand gathers and compresses into the belly. The front hand reaches and delivers that power outwards. There's 30 more seconds, then I'll give you all a quick break for water, and then I'll explain why we were doing all this. I feel like I owe that to all of you after you know, an hour of waving our arms in the air. <laughs> it's harder to gather on this side. Yes. There's always an easy side and a rough side. Which is why we have to do this every day. Shui Mei Tian. Practice every day. And everyone relax, grab a quick sip of water, and then we'll carry this to the conclusion. Just finish the lines in Chinese. I think I can tell that Joanna is not in front of the camera. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, I agree. <laughs> all right. So, hey, Kira's back. All right, so watching me for a second. What we have here is a continuously whooping exercise. There's no end to it. I can do this until I collapse from hunger, exhaustion, or boredom, all of which are plausible outcomes. What I want to do from here is carry this into a movement that has a line or vector that carries me in a direction. And so as I draw out, I press into the belly, everything is just as it was before, but now, instead of turning outwards, I internally rotate that back hip, and the back arm presses forward, which creates a twist that will then power me into my circle walking. It's not the front hand that powers me, it's that turning of the back hand. The front hand is only ever the antenna, it's out there reaching in the ether ever encounters it will deal with, but it deals with at the direction of the back. Again, if, if Rachel's right here, if I'm pushing on her with one arm, I can wiggle my wrist and it doesn't do much. If I wiggle both wrists, you see that jolt that goes through her body because that's not a wrist wiggle, that's a full body press. It just looks like a wrist wiggle because that's the most obvious part of the extremity, okay? Same thing is true here. As I'm drawing in, this is my continuous circle. As I slow it down so you can see the transition, outside rotation, and now internal rotation of that back hip. There's that press and that roll of that back hand. You can see the amount of space between the two arms. That twist and press, the press of that palm is the direction I'm going to step. If that palm is pressing here, I can step there. If that palm is pressing a little across, that's going to carry me along my circle. The more I twist that arm, 
the more it twists my spine, the deeper of a circle I can encounter. So this is just the antenna. This is the steering wheel and the motor. Does that conceptually make sense to most of you? More or less? Cool, let's play with that. Really let's play conceptual. It starts conceptually, and then we'll hopefully build from there. So watch me one more time, we'll let Rachel step in. We have our roll. Playing with that roll, it's continuous arc. And now on three, one, two, and here's our three, same start, same continue, but now from here, this hip is gonna turn in, drilling me into it. See how I'm now back weighted? I'm rolling around that back hip. I'm pressing with that back hand. And from there, we can all take a couple of easy steps twice around the circle and back to neutral. And I'll let Rachel step in and guide to the next of those. I'll be watching her the first couple times to make sure she's got it down, and I'll give all of you my attention. So as she rolls, internal right. It is external. God damn it. I know. It's okay. Sorry, everyone. In the last 10 minutes of class, the dyslexia <laughs> gets me to. So she has her constant rolling coil. And on three, one, Two, three. Now watch, she's gonna continue to keep going, keep going, keep going. And now the change happens here. Instead of externally rotating this leg, she's gonna turn it internal and drill into it, creating a twist led by this hand. That twist then carries her around as she steps. You feel that? Yeah. You can make a bigger circle if you want. There you go. And what she's learning how to do here is how to follow a coil. She's creating a coil, <laughs> then she's taking it for a walk. And it feels weird at first. It feels really weird. But then you realize that you can create a coil from the top and then carry the bottom, from the bottom and carry the top. You can create a coil from any number of places and then carry it to other parts of your body and other areas you walk through. Same side again. No. It's okay. Fine. Take your time. Find your roll. Internal? External. So it's okay. Gosh. Goodness. <laughs> oh, fudge sickles. <laughs> Yeah, I got it. I got Good. She's got her roll. Good. And on three. One, two, and three. And there's that drill into the back leg, the pressing with that back arm. She corrects the front leg first as she steps and then walks around that pressure from that back arm for two circles. Very nice, Kira. Good, Joanna. I can tell from your head's bobbing that you're pulling from the feet a little bit. It's looking great. And good, Derek and Elizabeth. Good stretch, April. Excellent. And now the other direction. Okay. It's important to balance this out. All right. External. <laughs> there you go. Take your time. That's it. And one, two, three. There you go. The reach to the drill. There. And from that drill, there's the twist and the walk. Awesome. Very, very nice. And two little circles. I'm going to one thing that you can take much of one little piece. It's hard to. Awesome. So watching me for the briefest of moments, let Rachel come back in. She, she is doing a lovely job of this. As I reach through, you see how as I extend the near arm, it's the external rotation of that back leg that draws you back into place, right? And so if the hip rolls out, I continue my arc. What's changing here in terms of the hip mechanics is that as I reach out again, I'm still coming over that leg. I'm now pulling and twisting and drilling in that back leg, it's a corkscrew movement. It's not a sit. It's two, 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 two. It's that. It's just that incline plane rolling around a post. Just a classic drill bit. And then from there, I follow that roll as I step. If I were to just sink into that leg, right, which would be this. Now I've lost all that potential energy. Everything's dropped into the ground. I have nothing to move forward with. I need that pull into that back hip, that drill into that back hip to carry me open. And this is a really important move. It is so important 
But the end of every section of every circular Bagua form has this. For those who have been training with me for a little bit longer, you might recognize it as this piece right here. There's the kobu to the outside and the roll to the drill, and that gives you the angle you step off. This is just a more involved way of feeling all of the mechanics behind that roll so that each of them becomes sensical as you fall into that drill. If you can do this, this begins to make some sense. If you can't do this, this is kind of empty flopping of the arms and dropping into the back foot. All right, so I'm Rachel guiding you through just a couple more of these. Absolutely. There you go. One, two, and three. There's the reach, reach to drill. There, and then step. Good. And what's the other direction? We'll call it. All right, and the last is one, then I'll spend a little bit more. Other direction yep, again? Other direction. Okay. Just to, and it's external. Yep. And it's good to go back and forth. It forces you to that mind exercise over and over again until the second issue. If you do one side too much, you fall into patterns, hard to switch. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, and three. That was great. But, and circles. Awesome. Really, really cool. I like how that gets it, the weight directly into the belly. The belly. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. All right, everyone, relax for a second. So one last little quick of perspective on the guard. The Bagua guard or push rice mill palm we were just playing with is here. And on the outside, this looks like a fairly simple movement. It's not. Um, in our eight mother palms, our most basic Bagua form, there's holding chi, there's shouldering mountain, embracing moon, right? Um, Draw heaven, poke earth, lion holds ball, holding spear, yin yang swimming fish, and at the very end, the bagua guard. And if you look at that from kind of a base breakdown, we have pressing down, pressing up, pressing forward and back, pressing inside and out, gathering, holding and twisting, lifting, pressing and twisting, coiling around the center, and then this. And what this is, isn't just a floppy hand movement. This is a combination of all the vectors studied in the previous seven carried into one final master thesis movement. This is the amalgamation of all of this hard work, okay? And so a lot of time can be spent making this palm good. If this palm is good and the coil behind it is good, you have a really nice starting ground of getting practicing serious bagua. If you don't understand the various pressures forward, back, down, up, inside out, and how those coil coils reflect on your structure, it's really hard to do much more than walk fancy patterns. Okay, and so we're gonna play with a lot, especially in these Zoom classes, is how to feel these base cardinal directions and how to carry them into the more complex Bagua guard. And then once that's looking good, we'll do a bunch more work, hopefully with even like the, eight, with the um, old eight palms and the classic transitions of direction. Sound good? Awesome. Very nice work, everyone. Keep playing with this, okay? Make this your friend. Thank you, April, for the prompt. That was wonderful, that was perfect for tonight. Um, again, what you're working with is what I want to teach you. What is interesting to all of you is what I want to present in more depth. So you can just kind of you know, mime it between classes and I'll pick up on it, or you can tell me either way is fine, I'll do my best, and we'll make it work from there. Sound good? Awesome, and a big thank you to Rachel for her help. My body was in no shape to teach tonight, and she is why we were able to class, so thank you so much for stepping up and helping out tonight. Um, Rachel, thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.